Ultraman Taro. The sixth series in the Ultra franchise sees Kotaro Higashi merge with Taro to protect Earth from aliens and kaiju. Like the entries before it, episodes usually follow a formula of kaiju appears, military fails, and Ultraman wins. Unlike the other series though, Taro throws logic out the window. While you have insane scenes like kaiju being ripped apart in Ultraman Ace, nothing can prepare you for Taro. Characters will jump onto and hang from kaiju, children will somehow pull a kaiju to the floor using rope, and other things like this happen. Well, I could go on for hours showing examples like these just for sheer shock value, I want to talk about how these things eventually hampered my enjoyment of the show. I want to make it clear before I go into detail that I still think Taro is worth watching. I loved it until it became repetitive. The first reason this happened is because the show betrayed the rules of its own reality far too often. You're probably thinking, it's Ultraman, of course the reality doesn't make sense. And you'd be right. However, I'm talking about the fact that events will happen that show something is possible, only to say it's impossible moments later. The most common of these events is the way kaiju are hurt. It's incredibly common for the military to lose in these shows. They put on a good show, show us the destructive force of the kaiju, but ultimately require Ultraman to save the day. You would think though, that based on this fact, that means the kaiju are incredibly powerful. Taro tells you you're wrong. In multiple episodes, civilians will square up with the kaiju themselves. They effectively stab and cause the kaiju to bleed, with enough pain that it sometimes sheds a tear or hops around like Looney Tunes. It is often entertaining, but I can only handle the goofiness of it so much. Early in the series, the special defense team was pretty effective. Even if they didn't kill the kaiju, they had plans to at least assist Taro. They had nets to contain kaiju, mirrors that could turn a kaiju's focus, and good detective skills. Unlike what happened in Ultraman Ace, when Higashi mentions something might be suspicious, Zat actually listens and sends out a patrol. Unfortunately, this is exactly why the stuff with civilians hurting the kaiju really bothered me. During many episodes starting around two thirds of the way through, Zat became useless. They flew in on their planes, shot missiles that did nothing, and then were forced to eject. They didn't have any plans other than shoot the monster, so when they fail so hard but you see a civilian penetrate a kaiju's skin with a basic blade and weapon, it becomes annoying. Zat should have attached swords onto their missiles, because clearly that's every kaiju's weakness. Another issue I have with reality breaking is how Taro portrays the Ultra Brothers, specifically their power levels. It's well established at this time that Zofi is both the oldest and one of the strongest. You can assume Ace is powerful because he fought the strongest kaiju, and the other brothers have all had more experience than Taro, so their fighting techniques should be better. However, the episode where the brothers fight Tyrant decides that none of that matters. One by one, many of the brothers lose to Tyrant in a short amount of time. Their attacks do nothing to stop Tyrant from traveling to Earth, and yet Taro defeats Tyrant quickly with no assistance. He didn't acquire some new move, his parents didn't perform some of their space magic, he just won on his own. I have no problem with Taro being the youngest but suddenly becoming the strongest. My issue is that no plot is given to show why he would suddenly become so strong, and none of the episodes later show him have the same type of power. It's a shame because the interactions between the brothers are at their best in Taro. The crossover during the alien temperer fight might be my favorite crossover up to that point. The brothers interact through dialogue way more than ever before, and they have a body swapping adventure while trying to provide tough love to Taro. Even better, not all the brothers agree with this idea, and actively argue with each other. It gives so much personality and shows how these ultras feel and interact. It's 100% a must-see event of the franchise. Aside from the reality aspect, the other problem I have with Taro is the amount of silliness it has. Ultraman has always had silly aspects. There are serious episodes, but for the most part it's about superheroes fighting evil. Ultraman focuses on the hope and love of humanity, and tries to tell stories of human growth and potential. In Taro though, the silliness overshadows the other themes. Even during serious episodes, something so insanely goofy will happen that stands out as the memorable part of the episode, rather than whatever theme the story was trying to convey. For example, episode 8 tells the story of a March monster that's been eating locals. One night, a child sees his father get eaten and a nearby cop corroborates his story. Zat arrives on scene and fishes some materials out of the water, which the cop identifies as the belongings of people he knows. However, during this scene the cop asks, <laughs> Yeah, I absolutely did laugh at this joke, but the expression on the kid's face clearly shows it was not a time for jokes. Later, the son bravely charges the monster and stabs it with his spear in an attempt to avenge his father. Higashi regroups with the boy and asks him to leave the rest to him and accept he alone can't avenge his father. The boy reluctantly accepts, when suddenly the monster pulls out the tiny spear with its giant hands and throws it back at them. At this point in the series, I wasn't really bothered. I found it silly but entertaining and looked forward to more wild things to happen. However, these types of interactions wouldn't be outliers, they were the norm for most of the series. If that's all you want, then this show is probably one of the best Ultra series. For me though, you need a sense of normalcy in between the crazy stuff, so the wild moments appear even more crazy. Taro doesn't give you much normalcy, so it ends up feeling repetitive. There are more examples, but I don't want to make it seem like Taro is the worst thing ever, because it's far from that. 
It might not live up to my reality and tonal consistency standards, but it does live up to my standards for entertainment. Part of that is because of the creativeness of the episode plots. Ultraman Tara might have some of the most mind-boggling plots in the entire franchise, but there's no denying their creativity. Episode 13 is about a kaiju who gets a rocket stuck in its mouth and needs that to help remove it, as it hurts like a bad cavity. Episodes 17 through 19 involve a mutated larva that appears to be the only problem, only to reveal it's actually the food source for the kaiju burdon. During the attempts to stop it, a side plot involving a family wounded by Burda and the larva show how important family is and how sometimes circumstances can make you lose sight of that. Number 20 is about a baby kaiju who falls from space and how you deal with that without killing the kaiju. The episode right after is about a giant cicada that doesn't mean any harm and allows Zat to restrict its movements with a net. Zat understands it will die soon, assuming it has the lifespan of a regular cicada and leaves it be. Unfortunately, the people around it don't care and decide to kill it themselves, leading to a monster rampage. Arguably, the best thing besides the abundant creativity with these stories is that Tara takes the time to show they are a good kaiju. Bandara and Orphi are kaiju that mind their own business, but are targeted by humans. King and Queen Tortoise were safely brought to an island where they would be docile, only for the regular military to try and blow them up anyway. Taro often escorts these kaiju to safety, and it's a nice change of pace from the usual formula of killing everything. Zat is also one of the best team dynamics ever. Aside from the fact they actually listen to each other and have a good record against monsters early on, they are all likable people. Higashi knows how to get along with nearly everyone. Nambara is a comedic mama's boy. Lieutenant Aragaki jokes around but keeps his cool during missions, and Kitajima often assists his team without question. Every member of the team gets an episode or more that shows their life and struggles outside of Zat, and it helps endear the audience to them. My favorite episode of the series is episode 45, She Was Wearing Red Shoes. The plot focuses on Kitajima and how when he was a child one of his friends was taken by a stranger. In the present day, the friend reappears and Kitajima tries his best to reconnect with her. Unfortunately, the woman was taken by an alien as a child and turned into a weapon that would transform into a kaiju. The woman is distraught after seeing how kind and trusting Kitajima is of her and tells him this. She begs him to kill her before she changes and Kitajima was going to do it until he was stopped by Higashi. After the kaiju woman is sent to space by an empathetic Taro, Kitajima is shown firing at red shoes reminiscent of the ones his friend was wearing the day she was taken, fully letting go of the bond they once had. This is one of the only episodes in the series where the tone remains consistent and it shows how powerful Taro can be when it isn't trying to be purely silly. I believe Ultraman is at its best when it tells stories that both adults and children can resonate with on some level. You can have a child-focused series like Taro often was, but still tell a meaningful story that all ages can appreciate. I think Taro struggles to hit these beats, and instead distracts us with wacky fights and moments. Overall, I want to end this video by saying that Taro is not a bad series. It is some of the most fun you can have with the franchise. Between the great cast and strange but funny comedy, I have no doubt this show is a favorite of many people. It's only after tens of episodes that I began to feel the issues I described burned me out. Considering the show shows are sometimes twice as long as the modern shows, I'd still say it's impressive for it to be good for so many episodes anyway. Let me know what you think in the comments though. Am I too harsh on Taro? Did I miss something that would make me appreciate the wackiness more? I'd love to hear other opinions on the series. As always, thanks for watching.